Christopher, Skyzel, Gold, and the Coffee Project in the Yukon, Stakeholder Gold is very well positioned as a gold company. Can you give our listeners a little bit more information about where the Sky Zone project is, please? Sky Zone is the gold zone uh, that we're we've identified and are working on on the Ballarat project uh, in the in the in the White Gold District of the Yukon Territory. So Ballarat's eighteen thousand hectares. It's just north of the Yukon River, north of uh, Newmont's Coffee Gold project, and um, and 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 Ballarat is surrounded by the White Gold uh, and. Um, the sky zone is uh, about two thirds of the way up through the middle of the project on the on the western side, um, and uh, about three hundred meters to the west of where uh, where a road is being built through uh, through stakeholders' uh, claim position. It's Seventeen kilometers of that road will go through stakeholders' ground, and um, so the sky zone is three hundred meters to the west of that, um, and it and it's shaping up to to look like a very large. Uh, Perspective, uh, new new discovery in the white gold. Yeah, that's what we're hoping for this year. And in that area as well, you have the Ballarat project. Did I pronounce that properly? Yeah, Ballarat. Yeah. And you announced expo exploration in July. So should we be anticipating results from that? And can you give us kind of an overview on that uh, exploration project? Yes. The, so we'll have some results before the end of October. And we're looking really to make further confirmations on what we've already disclosed in the public market. So what we see the sky zone it has characteristics that are very similar to Golden Saddle deposit, uh, which is Northwest. Uh, the difference between sky zone, which is our project on Ballarat and Golden Saddle, from what we can see is size. Uh, so we have a, a significantly larger potential here in sky zone. Um, and, and we think it'll turn into a, a, a very significant new discovery in, in the White Gold District. So what are the characteristics that we see? Orthonicic rock type, we see we see all the same indicator minerals, tellurium, lead, molybdenum. Uh, importantly, we see a complete absence of arsenic in more than 2,000 samples to date. That's good news, um, uh, as arsenic is, is, uh, is prevalent in, in, in Newmont's coffee project uh, and, and inhibits, restricts completely recovery of portions of that deposit, uh, which is not the case for Golden Saddle. Golden Saddle has, has great metallurgy, very good and very compelling grades. So this is, uh, the, the Sky Zone is in, in, in many respects very similar to Golden Saddle. That's uh, what we think is the most analogous, but uh, but Sky Zone is, uh, you know, is well, it's 3.2 kilometers in strike length so far, which is significantly larger, four to five times larger than the footprint uh, for Golden Saddle uh, as it as it began this discovery process. So um, so we're very encouraged by what we see. Uh, and we think that uh, within the next 12 months, we're going to begin to really be able to provide concrete evidence on a new substantial several million ounce uh, uh, d uh, discovery in, in the White Gold District, starting 300 meters to the west of a road that's being built to the coffee. Uh, and um, so in a, in a great jurisdiction, a great location uh, with very compelling uh, uh, extractive characteristics as defined by Golden Saddle, uh, and then with, with some significant size potential. I want to get back to the coffee uh, project area, but first, I just want to point out to everyone from Investor News, this is an amazing investor company, investor directed, in that you only have 17.8 million shares outstanding, and you actually are growing organically because you actually have revenue through your Brazilian uh, business model. Tell our audience more about your Quartzsite uh, investments. It's a great business. It's in Brazil. It's cash flow, robust cash flow, very high margins. Uh, we've had one quarry operating very profitably for three years. We're going to ex we're expanding to three quarries this year, uh, and we think ultimately these quarries can make a million dollars profit per quarry per year. And we think we can go to ten quarries. A great business, and and it allows us to to you know run our business, run the company, um, and and constrain our share issuance. So. You know, our model is we seek to have a major discovery in the White Gold District in, of, uh, of the Yukon Territory and get paid for it. Get, you know, get our, have our shareholders get paid for it. Uh, and, and in order to create value on a per share basis, we need to be able to constrain the amount of shares we have outstanding. And we can achieve that with cash flow. So it's a great business. Uh, it's, um, 
it's serving its purpose. It's expanding robustly. We're very excited about it. We like Brazil. And um, there's there's several avenues for us to expand the ca that cash flow business, and and we're we're quite excited about it. So this year we're adding we have a, an exotic blue uh, material that's 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 been very very profitable, as I say, for three years. And this year we're adding uh, a, a kind of blue white new material and a, uh, a a white a more a white quartzite uh, for which there can be bigger volume uptake and uh, but still very significant profit margins. Uh, and these two new quarries are not far from our existing quarry in Minas Gerais. So, um, so this uh, this is this is an exciting aspect of our business. It's not what's going to take our shares to 10, 20 times return from here, but uh, but but uh, having a major discovery in the Yukon uh, can do that. So, if we can constrain the number of shares we have outstanding, develop and pay for our business with cash flow, which is what we're doing. Uh, then, then we can we can we can uh, support that substantial share re-rating that we seek uh, with uh, successful uh, geological discovery undertaking. And of course, Christopher, you're not just the president, CEO, and director of Stakeholder Gold. You're also a world-renowned expert when it comes to gold funds and ETFs. Can you talk to us a little bit about what you're going to be speaking about uh, at PDAC as? Uh, a gold expert, please. Sure, thank you, Tracy, for that very kind uh, summary. But really, the the the, the uh, you know it can be summarized as this: so that we track 114 managed funds, 100 gold funds, six battery metal funds, four silver equity funds, four metal exploration funds. Those funds that are run by fund managers they hold assets of 28 billion U.S. dollars. They started in 1956 with the uh, with Van Eck, and they've grown steadily since then. Um, but ETFs began in 2004, and now there's 220 metal and mining ETFs worldwide, but they hold assets of 330 billion US dollars. So more than an order of magnitude more money in ETFs. And those ETFs have sucked money out of the managed funds uh, that, that, are, that are deployed by investment managers and also from the junior metal and mining space. And um, the consequences are dramatic dramatic mispricing. And this is all happening against a backdrop of, of increasing metal demands uh, from the intense metal the metal requirements for the energy transition. So uh, there's some dramatic uh, effects on markets that result from the advent of ETFs in 2004. Um, and, um, and uh, you know, in the, in the universe of gold funds, 55% um, of the money from the 100 gold funds that we track is invested in Canada. And the money's raised in these funds all over the world. 55% of the money comes to Canada. So where are the market? 15% goes to Australia. So Canada and Australia uh, is 70% of the market for uh, publicly listed gold equities. And, um, um, you know, we, our jurisdictions have, have, uh, have the most advanced regulations uh, and uh, engineering requirements. So, um, so uh, you know, there, we can have comparative advantage by operating in this space in Canada. We we know this business quite well, uh, and and in this in this gold cycle, which is very different than previous gold cycles, whole new set of buyers, central bank buyers, uh, really are the, are the are the catalyst for the major price revisions we've seen in in most recent history. And they're not price sensitive, uh, and there's there's significant you know macroeconomic events under uh, 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 under underway. Um, so you know in this environment. Uh, gold discovery and jurisdiction matter uh, more perhaps than in previous cycles, and certainly since February 2022. So, um, you know, we we look at um, in our particular instance, we're in Canada, uh, in in the White Gold District. It's a jurisdiction in which we uh, we fully expect that uh, we're able to prove our thesis and and have a significant economic mineral discovery, a gold discovery um, in, in that jurisdiction that that our shareholders will be rewarded for that. For those of you interested in finding out more about Stakeholder Gold, please go to their website listed below. Thank you so much for joining us today, Christopher. Thank you, Tracy.